Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on impedance matching. For this video, I still concentrate on single stop. This video, I'm going to have a detailed discussion how can a single stop be used for impedance matching. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part 9 series discussion on impedance matching. So if you're keen to know more about impedance matching, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion related to impedance matching. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Let's understand why we need to use single stop to do impedance matching. Impedance matching using lump element okay, like inductor and capacitor, they are actually only suitable for low frequency. Early on, I have also discussed how can we do impedance matching using lump element as shown over here. Basically, lump element can be inductor and capacitor. However, they are only suitable for low frequency. Another reason is because we may not have the exact value. For example, inductor, basically it can be like 1 nano Henry, 2 nano Henry, or 3 nano Henry. Okay, but we, are, we know that the inductor don't exist at every so-called every integer. Or even, for example, we want to have 1.1 nano Henry, 1.2 nano Henry, 1.3 nano Henry. And that's because of this, we may not have the exact value and this become an issue. Moreover, at high frequency, majority of impedance matching network use distribute element, okay, which is transmission line. This is because the physical dimension of the component, they become comparable with the length of the transmission line. Okay, so basically, the higher the frequency, the smaller the wavelength, and therefore the shorter the transmission line. And hence, because of high frequency, the transmission line becomes shorter. Hence, it may be comparable with the lump element. So basically, this is also one of the attractiveness why we want to use distribute element or transmission line to do impedance matching. Plus, okay, lump component may behave in an unexpected way. Earlier on, I have mentioned on my previous video, for example, at high frequency, because of sub-resonant frequency, inductor can behave like a capacitor. And also at high frequency, capacitor, in fact, can be behave like an inductor. And this becomes a major issue because it can be unexpected. And this is the scenario that we want to avoid. And hence, these are all the motivation. That's the reason why we want to move to distribute element or we use single stop matching Okay, as a transmission line to match the network. Stop tuning introduce a stop, okay, which can be a length of transmission line that is open or short at the end at specific point along the transmission line to counteract reactive element in the line and thus match the impedance. Okay, don't worry so much about this. Later on, I will explain this again. Okay, but this is what it means. Okay, this is the stop, okay, additional stop. Okay, they can be so-called attached to the transmission line at a certain length. For example, this is what it means here, at a certain length. And on the end of the stop, it can be open or short circuit. For this case, will be a short circuit. As I mentioned earlier on, it can be open or short circuit. Okay, basically, the key reason is to counter the reactive element, okay, which I will explain on the next few slides. By carefully select the length and position of the stop, it is possible to create a reactive load that cancel out the reactive components of the impedance. Okay, this results in a better impedance match between the load and the transmission line, 
leading to improved signal transmission and reception efficiency. Okay, don't worry, I will explain all this step by step. Stop tuning impedance matching is commonly used in wireless communication system where they help optimize the performance of impedance matching. We know that we want to minimize as much as possible on the reflector wave. And in order to do this, to have maximum power transfer, we need to ensure the impedance is matched. Hence, it's very essential to be able to design a stop to do this impedance matching. Okay, so this is what I mean. Impedance matching is a critical aspect of circuit design. Ensure maximum power transfer and minimize the signal reflection. There are a few ways to do this impedance matching, okay, which I have already discussed. Okay, first way is basically the transformer-based impedance. This is the LC network and also the stop tuning impedance, which is the objective of this video. Basically, all these allow us to achieve efficient and reliable operation of various electronic system. Okay, let's go a little bit info on the discussion on the single stop matching. Okay, for this case here, I like to emphasize the short and open. As you can see that this position is shorted, this position is open, and hence this is how they get the name, the short circuit stop matching and also the open circuit stop matching. Let's do a detailed discussion. How can a single stop perform impedance matching? Okay, for example, this is a transmission line. At the end of the transmission line, it actually connected to the load. And therefore, when I actually look in over here, okay, this can be a ZL or we can divide them to become a emittance YL. Same over here, when we look over here, basically will be the source. And we can write down the emittance of the source as following. So what we want to do is basically, we want to carefully select a point on the transmission line. Remember, earlier on, I have also discussed the transmission line. All the points at all the transmission line, they basically have different impedance. And therefore, we can strategically choose the length of the transmission line that when we actually look inside here, it will be 1 plus JP. So which means that we need to strategically understand the length that will actually have an overall effect of emitter of 1 plus JB. Okay, so remember, let's say the characteristic impedance is 50 ohm. Okay, we normalize it, it will become a 1. And basically, this is what it means. Okay, so basically, this will be the 1, which is the real term. And what we want to do is basically, we want to get away this imaginary term. Okay, imagine like what I mentioned, the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, let's say it's 50. So if we only remain this one, okay, because 50, you need, still need to do a normalize, which is also equal to one. And when the characteristic impedance is equal to one, and when I actually look over here, which is also one, okay, if I'm able to remove away this plus JB, then I am successfully done on the impedance matching. So how can I actually remove this imaginary term? Okay, I will introduce a stop. Okay, for this case, it's a short circuit stop having the effect of minus JB. And once I have the effect of minus JB, I actually remove away the J component, which is just the imaginary component. And what left over will be, once I look over here, okay, with the so-called the stop over here, I actually successfully remove away the imaginary term. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.